I'm John, back here at Rock West. We've got a project that we want to work on. Something to notice about my bike, I have a rock chip guard down on the bottom that's plastic injection molded. And I want to replace that with a Kevlar epoxy version that will make it look a little different and it will give great protection against rocks. So we'll take the bike inside and start the process. So we're going to take this off. So here's the part itself. Notice it has some strips of tape in here that kind of keep it away from the frame so that it doesn't abrade the frame at all. It also allows water to roll down through and drain out the bottom. So we'll take these bolts out. We've taken the part off the bike and we are ready to make a mold off of it. We are going to use the components for the large starter kit. So we've got our fabric here, fiberglass for a mold. We got our resin, the 105-209 system. We've got some wax release and we've got uh, our cups and brushes. I created a small real quick jig just to hold it in place, uh, work on it very easily without getting a mess everywhere. For this project, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So instead of taking this part and putting wax on it and everything else, I'm actually gonna put tape on it to make it simple because we have some holes in it we need to cover and we also want to uh, make it easy to, to take off when it's ready. And the tape I'm using is flash breaker tape that's used in high temperature situations as well as low temperature and uh, epoxy won't stick to it, so we use it kind of as a fake release tape. In this case, the surface doesn't have a lot of important features or anything like that, so the surface isn't as important if we get it perfect. Not only that, but this rock chip guard that is on here has some pits in it and things from the rocks hitting it, and so it just makes it easier just to cover them with tape than to try to fill them and make sure we don't stick our resin to it. We don't want the tape kind of interfering with our lip, so we'll take a sharp razor blade and carefully trim the edges back. We'll put a little wax on there just to make sure that nothing sticks to it. We can just wipe on a couple of layers of this just to make sure that we don't have any sticking problems, which we won't, but this always helps to have added protection. Let that haze and then we'll buff it off. So while this is waiting to um, haze and before we can buff it, we will cut some material. Just looking at this, our part doesn't need very much. So we will cut some material here. In this case, we don't need it very thick, but I am going to put, we'll go eight layers of fabric. That'll give us about 80 thousandths, which is about twice as thick as this. Want to make sure that you have all your materials ready to go before you mix the resin. Otherwise, you might mess up your uh, resin and have to mix some more. This isn't supposed to be pretty, mind you. We're just trying to make a shape that's going to get hit by rocks, so we don't care. That's finished. Now we need to weigh out our resin. And I think I'm going to start with 100 grams of resin. Our mixing ratio is 3.68 to 1 by weight. So if we do the math, that means that I take 100 grams and I multiply it by 0.27. With 100 grams, I just need to put in 27 grams and that'll be it. And this is the 209 hardener, which makes it uh, a very slow pot life, about 40 minutes. So we can have it in this mixed container for 40 minutes before it gets hot and starts uh, curing. But once we get it on the material, that becomes our working life, and that will be more like an hour and a half or so. This won't take that long, but it will give us plenty of time to work with the material. Okay, it's got a nice uniform mix now. It doesn't have any marbling effect. It's all a uniform color. First thing we'll do is we'll wet the surface out a little bit. 
just to get some adhesion for the for the fiber to stick to. And remember the brushes can give us bristles, so look out for those if you don't want them. We'll take our first ply of material, just drape it over, make sure we have enough overlap. We'll probably end up trimming this a little bit. And now we can work it, work the wrinkles down a little bit, make the material conform. And then we can work it with the brush. This first ply can be really wet because we want the second ply to absorb the resin from the first ply. So at this point you can kind of see why I opted to build a little stand for it to work on it. And that's just so that the fiber can drape over the sides without touching the table or getting in the way. And as you can see, it, it wants to peel up a little bit on the sides, so I'll trim it back and that will help control that. Okay, I think we're ready for the second ply. And you'll notice I'm not doing any fiber orientation on these, these are all 090. So now you'll notice that the resin from the first ply is being soaked up into the second ply and we'll just continue that throughout the entire process and uh, that will help us regulate our resin content as well. Got all eight plies on here and completely saturated. Just trying to work down all the edges a little bit. I'll have to come back and check it when it starts to cure, make sure everything is looking okay. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it.